Lesson 7-1, graphing exponential functions. The exponential function, you have the independent variable is an exponent, and the exponential function has the form of f of x equaling b to x squared, where b is the base, is a constant, and the independent variable x is the exponent. So for an exponential function, b has to be greater than 1. If it was uh, for a, a growth, if b is less than 1 but greater than 0, then it would be a decay. So exponential growth occurs when an initial amount increases by the same percent over a given period of time. The graphs of exponential functions have asymptotes. These asymptotes are boundaries. So a line will approach it, but will never cross or touch it. So our first example for an exponential growth, we need to graph this function. Find the domain range, the y-intercept, the asymptote, and the end behavior. So to do this, we can come up with a table of coordinates. So this would be our x, this is our y. So I'll just use the basic numbers. So let's do um, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, and then we'll use 3. If I put a negative 1 in there, 2 to the negative first power is 0.5. 2 to the 0 power is 1. 2 to the first power is 2. 2 squared is 4. 2 cubed is 8. Now if I were to plot these on my coordinate plane, everything probably by 1s. So I have negative 1 and 0.5 plus 0.5. That would be here. I would have 1 and 2, or 0 and 1. 0 and uh, 1 and 2, 2 and 4, 3 and 8. Now, if I were to go to negative 2, and there are 2 to the negative second power is 1 fourth. That just means it just keeps getting smaller and smaller here, closer and closer to the x axis, but never ever crosses. So my line here would get close here, but it will never equal that because there's nothing I can raise 2 to to get equal to 0. So my graph would look like that. So the domain for here would be all 0. If I can put any number in for x, the range would be y such that y has to be greater than 0. It can never equal 0. It has to be above 0. The y intercept y-intercept is at 0, 1 the asymptote is when x equals 0 or not when x equals 0 when y equals 0 so the asymptote would be right here and then the end behavior to as x approaches negative infinity y approaches 0, it doesn't get to 0, but it approaches 0. As x approaches positive infinity, y approaches positive infinity. Next example, graph this one, and we'll create a table. These are x, these are our y's. So let's see, we could do do negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. And then we have uh, 4 to the negative second power, which would be 1 16th, give us 0 0.0625, and then negative first power would be 0 0.25. The 0 power is 1, so the first power is 4. The second power is 16. So if we were to plot these, negative 2 and 0 0.06 be roughly down here. Then negative 1 and 0.25 here. Then 1. 1 will give us 4. 2 would give us way past here. So it's going to come along here and then jump up fairly quickly. So our asymptote is right here which is the x-axis where it crosses the y-axis at 0. So the domain of 
at a range y such that y is greater than zero the y intercept is zero one and the asymptote is y equaling zero and the end behavior as x approaches negative infinity y approaches zero and as x approaches positive infinity y approaches positive infinity yep graph transformation of exponential growth functions so here we have uh, x g of x equaling negative half times three raised to the x plus four plus one now this one is the original cow would be three to the x power so now there are some transformations on this one so what we're going to do is use our graphing calculator to come up with our points so we'll go to our y equals clear everything here and we're going to type in negative 0 0.5 times 3 raised to the parentheses x plus 4 and parentheses and then plus 1. Now if I hit graph, you can see my graph here. I'm going to hit second graph to come up with a table of values. Uh, let's choose some ones that we can go do fairly easily. Um, So let's choose negative 4, and then we get 0.5. We have negative 3, that's a negative 0.5. We have negative 2, negative 3.5. And we have negative 1 and negative 12.5. So now if we were to plot these on our graph, so negative 4 and 0.5. That would be here, negative 3 and negative 0.5 would be here. Then we have negative 2 and 3, negative 3.5 would be down here. And then negative 1 and 12.5 would be down here. So this would come something like this, down like that. That's what the graph will look like. You can see it is reflected. It is reflected across the x-axis because there's many of them outside here. And it shifted. It shifted uh, one up and then four to the left. Next graph the transformation of this exponential growth. So we'll do the same thing, put it in our calculator to come up with the table of values. So our y equals, here I'm going to do in parentheses negative 1 divided by 3. In parentheses and then times 2 raised to the x minus 2 power and then plus 4. And hit graph. See our graph here. I'm going to go a second graph to see a table of values. See the highest point is going to be 4. So it doesn't, so when you, when I scroll up, you can see that it just keeps hitting 3.94 and 99 and then 4. It, the asymptote is at 4, so it approaches 4, but it never gets there. Okay, so let's see. Let's plot some points down. So let's first put our asymptote in here at 4. So it approaches there. And let's do some points here. See where is it across the y-axis. See if they have any other 
nope, we don't have any whole numbers or integers, so let's do negative 4 and then 3.9. Negative 4 and 3.9 is going to be left in here. Then we have negative 3.9, so let's go to 0 and 3.9. Three would be three point three. It just keeps going down like that. Uh, four and two point six. So four and two point six would be roughly here. Then we have five and one point three. Five and one point three would be here, 6 and negative 1.3, so 6 and negative 1.3 would be down here. So if we drew our graph, it looks something similar to this, thumbs down, so it never reaches forward and it pushes down when it goes to the left. Next example three, analyze the graphs of exponential functions. Then you identify the k and write the function for the graph of j of x equaling f of x plus k as it relates to f of x equaling 3.5 to the x power. So if this is f of x, we want to know what happened to this point. It went down one, two. So it went down two. So we would say that k equals a negative. So that means j of x would equal 3.5x, then we'd have a minus 2 at the very bottom. Next, here we have a point here. It went down 1, 2, 3, 4. Everything else would stay the same. So k would equal uh, negative 4. So we have j of x equaling 7 raised to the x power minus 4. Going on to example 4, use exponential growth functions. So as exponential growth can be modeled by a sub or a of t equaling a times 1 plus r raised to the t power, where a to the t power, or a, a of t represents the amount of time periods a is the initial amount and R is the constant rate, constant percent rate of increase per time period. The growth factor is 1 plus R. So this formula is very similar to finding uh, interest. So here we want to find uh, how much is something increasing. So to do this, we're going to answer this question and we're going to use our calculator to solve. Mr. Lopez recently won the lottery. Suppose he takes a lump sum payment and he invests $50 million into an account that yields 5% interest annually. Graph a function that models the account in his the amount in his account. Then estimate the amount the account has after 20 years. So the first thing we need to do is we need to enter this into our calculator. So we go to y equals, and he invests 50 million. Now, to make this reasonable, we're going to use 50 instead of 50 million. So that 50 represents million, and we're going to plug it. That's the initial amount. And then the percent is 5% annually. So that's 1.05, because if we use the formula 1 plus r, the r is 0 0.05. So 1.05 raised to the x power, or t, for the number of years. Now we're only going to use um, quadrant 1, so if we hit our windows, we're going to change this to 0. Our maximum, let's count, just do 25, count by 5s. This minimum is 0. And the maximum, let's say 200. So that represents 200 million. Then we're going to count by 25s. And now I hit graph. You can see our graph here. 
And our last part would be, we want to find the amount when it hits 20. So when X is 20, so if I go to second trace, I want to do values. So number one, if I type in 20, you can see 132.66, which is the same thing if you went to the table feature there. So this one, how much would be in the account after 20 years? We would say we would round that off. So we would say roughly 132,654,000 890 dollars. If we were to continue on further and further, more decimal places, you could see that, like you see in the table there. Um, but that would be roughly about how much is in here. Next, each day for two weeks, Addison wants to increase the number of steps she takes by 10%. So how does she take 10,000 steps? The first day, you use a graphing calculator to graph and interpret a function to represent this situation. Then estimate the number of steps she will take on the last day of the challenge. So day of X equals the initial is 3,000 steps times 1 plus the rate is 10%. So that's 0 0.1 raised to the X power. So we can write this as Y equals 3,000 times 1.01 .01 raised to the x power. Grab our calculator. y equals, so this is 3,000 times 1.01 .01 and parentheses raised to the x power. Uh, let's see if it shows up on here. No, we need to change our window settings. So zero, let's do the, we have to change for sure the Y maximum. But we know it starts at 3,000, so let's do uh, two weeks, that's at least 14, uh, 14 days. Uh, let's just make this, let's make this 20, let's make that 20,000. We're going to count by 1,000, and now let's see if that shows up, okay? Now, if I do second trace the value, and it says, estimate the steps she will take on the last day of the challenge. So for two weeks, so two weeks, that is 14 days. Hit enter. Um, this one I realized I put down the wrong decimal. I put 1%, so I need to get rid of this. Now that is correct. Now if I hit graph, that will look more like her increase. Now let's do seconds, trace, to find the value, number 1, put 14. Then you get your year spent would be one eleven thousand three hundred and ninety-two. So eleven thousand three hundred and ninety-two steps. Next on New Year's Day, Alma begins a savings plan. She saves one dollar for the first one dollar the first day of January and increases the amount she saves each day by 1%. Find the growth factor, then use a graphing calculator to estimate the amount of money she will save on day 180 of her savings plan. So we have A of X equaling, the initial amount is $1, times 1 plus 1% 1 is 0 0.01. Raised to the x power, so the growth factor is right in here, so that would be 1.01. 
Now, if we put this in our calculator, we have, let's clear this. So we have 1 times 1.01, .01, in parentheses, raised to the x power. Graph this. Might have to change our windows. Okay, so let's change this to the maximum. We have to go to at least 180, so I'll make this 200. We'll count by 50s. The maximum, let's just make this 500. We'll count by 100s. Now let's graph. So we'll check this. We can go to second trace value. Let's see, second trace number one. Type in 180. That gives us 5.99. So that would be roughly six dollars. So about six dollars she would have in her savings account. Graph graphing exponential decay functions. Exponential decay occurs when the least amount decreases by the same percent over the given period. So for exponential function, the form of x is the x power, and we're comparing when the d is between 0 and 1. Now, because it's a decay, it's going to be 1 minus the interest or the rate that you're doing. So that would be your decay factor. So here, we want to determine whether each function is a real or an exponential. The key is to look at where the B is. And the B is going to tell you if it's a growth or a decay. So growth greater than 1, decay between 0 and 1. So we have five, that means it's a growth. Two sevenths is a fraction less than one, so this is a decay. Letter C is a fraction, but it's above one, so this is growth. 1.05 is above, so this is growth. And 0.85 is below one, so this is a decay. Next. We have 14, which is growth. 9 13th is a decay. 8 fifths, 8 fifths is above 1, so this is a growth. 1.02 is a growth. And 0.92 is a decay. Now we're going to graph exponential decay functions and then identify the key features listed in them. So again, we can do a table. So we'll start off with negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. So if we put a negative 2 in there, reciprocal of half is 2, square it, that gives you 4. Reciprocal of half is 2, raised to the first power is 2. Same thing to the 0 power is 1. Same thing to the first power is itself. And this will give us 1, 4. So if I were to plot this, the asymptote is still the x-axis. So we put a point at negative 2, 4, negative 1, 2, 0, 1, 1 half, and 2, 1 fourth. So it comes down like this, gets close to the asymptote, but never crosses. For the domain, the domain is all real. The range, because y is greater than 0, the y-intercept is at 0, 1. The asymptote, y is equal to 0. End behavior, as x approaches negative infinity, y approaches positive infinity. And as x approaches positive infinity, y approaches 0. Next, draw this table. So 
we have, we'll do negative two, negative one, zero, one. So a negative two, one fifth to the negative second power gives us 25. One fifth to the negative first power gives us uh, five. Zero is just one, and this goes to one fifth. We plot them, I can't plot negative 325 too high up. Negative one five, so now one five would be here, zero one, one and one fifth would be down here. Comes down, crosses, never gets the x axis. So domain all real range uh, y is greater than zero, y intercept zero one, asymptote y is equal to zero, and the end behavior as x approaches negative infinity, y approaches positive infinity. As x approaches positive infinity, y approaches zero. Next graph, the transformation of exponential decay functions. So here we're going to use our calculator. So we have negative 2 times, we're going to do 0.25 raised to the parentheses x minus 4, then plus 3. So the asymptote is at positive 3. Now if I graph this, let me uh, change the settings here. So there you can see our graph. This would be at 3. So if I go to my table, we can now plot some points down here. So let's scroll down a little bit. So let's put a point at 3, negative 5. Three negative five would be here. We have four one. We have five two and a half. Actually, four one is up here. So four one, five two and a half. Would be here. We got six two point eight. Remember the asymptote is right here, so I can't cross that one. Now we could draw our line. Comes around like this and then comes down. Just double check that. Hit the graph button. Okay, so there is our graph here. Next one. Be this one. Let's grab our calculator again. Y equals so negative seven. This would be point five zero, and then this is x plus four, and then plus two. Hit graph. So the asymptote would be at 2. Now let's come with our table of feature, our table. So second graph. Okay, so we're going to put the asymptote here at 2. Or we just draw a diagonal here. So can't cross that one. Now some points. Let's do negative four, negative five, which would be here. We have negative three, negative one point five, be here. We have negative two and positive point five, point two five. We have negative one and one over one. We can go down to zero, zero and one and a half. So here, so it's going to come up like this and then come across near the asymptote. And our last one here, use our calculator again. So 
uh, y equals Brings us to negative 5. This is 0.25. This would be x minus 2. And then we have a plus 3. So the asymptote is at 3. So if we hit graph, uh, let me go back to Get rid of this plus sign here. So now we can hit graph. Let me go back here. I forgot the parentheses, so that's why. Parentheses, then plus 3. Now hit graph. There we go. Doesn't crosses at uh, po positive 3, doesn't get to that point, so let's do our table. Go the other direction. All right, so it's at, ooh, the maximum is, no, three. So let's put our asymptote in here. So we have a point at 2, negative 2, 2, negative 2, and 2, negative 2, and down here. We got 3 and 1.75 here, and then we got 4 and 2.6. Five and two point nine. So it's going to come up like this, and hug along that line. So that is our lesson on graphing exponential functions.